family problems can be solved through frank and friendly discussion, which points the way to a happy family life. You know, this is beginning to be quite a family project. It certainly is. Well, good morning, Hickory family. Uh, my name is Andy, and I today am standing in uh, for Pastor Justin, who unfortunately at the end of this week received some sad news in his family. Uh, Justin's stepdad, Billy Telfer, uh, unexpectedly passed away. And so uh, he had been in the hospital uh, dealing with some pneumonia, but had been improving, and they were looking forward to him getting out. Took a turn for the worse at the end of the week and passed away quickly. So on Friday, Justin and Jamie flew down to Florida to be with Justin's mom, Phyllis, and the rest of the family. And uh, uh, Samantha and Isaac and Abby and Jackson uh, will be uh, flying down this week for the funeral services. So I just ask that you keep them all in your prayers uh, and in your thoughts, um, not just for their travels, but the time together grieving and mourning. Uh, We grieve and mourn with them. Um, But we're also Uh, hopeful for conversations that take place among family members. Uh, And we are celebrating, actually, because Billy received the Lord later in life. So he was one that would always give nice bear hugs. And so I look forward to giving Billy a bear hug in heaven. Uh, So just ask if everybody would just close your eyes. Let's pray as a Hickory Ridge family. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for the life of Billy Telfer. We thank you, Lord, because you wired him with joy. And Suzanne and I, who knew him for over 20 years, were recipients of that joy uh, and that generosity of spirit, Lord. But we are so, while we grieve and mourn with Justin and Jamie and the family and Phyllis, Lord God, we celebrate because you called him to yourself and he submitted his life to you and you forgave his sins And he will spend eternity with you in heaven, and we will see him again. So, Lord, we mourn and we grieve, but we celebrate. We ask your blessing upon all of them in Florida, upon travels, upon conversations, Lord God. And we give you glory for the life of Billy Telfer, a life well lived. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. And just ask that you keep the Senesi family uh, in your prayers. So we are running a last-minute audible here. Uh, This was late this week, and so... Uh, there's good news and there's bad news that go with that late minute change. The bad news is, like I said, you're stuck with me today to close up this series. The, the good news is that this is going to be a shorter message. Cause, <laughs> and all God's people said, amen. <laughs> all right, all right. I've had some thoughts going on. This has been a very practical series, and I've been appreciative of not just Justin, as he always does, going to God's Word, but providing options, guidelines, if you will, in some critical areas. The the areas are critical that we've talked about in this series. Discipline, technology, relationships, friendships, dating relationships. These are all areas that families and parents need to step up to. How exactly that gets walked out? different for every family, potentially. I know in the area of discipline where Justin started the series, we have two children. One of those options he put up on the screen worked really well with one of our children. The other one, not so much at all. And that's why they're guidelines. You've got to consult the Holy Spirit and invite him in to give you wisdom and discernment. But as I've been listening to this series, there's been some thoughts that have kind of been pulsating in my spirit. And, and as the title indicates, yes, our families are imperfect. My family, your family, they're imperfect. Uh, But God is perfect. And we all got some stuff. And sometimes our stuff seems all too real. But God is real too. And so one of the other things that highlights from this series for me is that the Bible is practical. I've heard it said this way. Reading the Bible will mess you up as a Christian. Think about it. You know, sometimes we go through life with little snippets here, little bumper stickers there, little, you know, vignettes here that we think are in there. We think God, you know, because it's the way it's been introduced to us, the way it's been taught to us. Then we actually open the Bible and we, wow, that, that's not really the depth of what God meant at all or the context in which he said it at all. And, you know, the Bible is so practical, sometimes brutally practical uh, and has a lot to say about how we can thrive in our imperfect families. So I want to start our time uh, briefly this morning in Proverbs. 
22.6 that starts off this way. As many of you know this verse, train up a child. If you go back to the, in the, with the word train in the original language, it means this, to initiate, to be purposeful, to be intentional. You want to train for anything. You got to dedicate yourself to it. That's why some families are going to make a step in a little bit of dedicating their children to the Lord. This is a purposeful act. It's, it's premise, training up a child. We'll get to the promise in a, in a minute. But this premise is if you will be dedicated to training up your child, it does not mean that everything about your child will be perfect. It does not mean that every word that comes out of the angel's mouth or every action that they take will be perfect. The premise doesn't require perfection. What it does require is dedication. Taking the initiative. It's not throw your hands up in the air. Remember a couple weeks ago, Justin talked to us about technology. And I know some folks who say, ah, kids today, they know everything about Snapchat and Instagram. I don't know any of it. If we throw our hands up in the air, if we give up that responsibility that God uniquely places in the hands of parents, instead of training up our children in the way that they should go, then our children are going to be more apt to be like the wind. Kind of like here in Delaware. I had some roof shingles blow off my roof recently. The wind can get pretty ferocious here, right? It can make some noise, but it can blow this way and then that way and sometimes not blow at all. Or like the waves of the ocean, they can crash this way or that way and then sometimes there's no waves at all. We don't want that for our kids. We want to train them up in the way that they should go. This is purposeful. This is intentional. This requires us taking the initiative. As, he, as Justin encouraged us a couple weeks ago, if you don't know about the technology, learn. Don't give up that responsibility. Train up your children in the way that they should go. This is towards Jesus. This means you point your child to the teachings of Jesus. We are not training our children to ourselves to have all the answers to their questions and all the solutions to their problems. We are training them up to the one who is the way. I am the way and the truth and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but through me. This requires us to invite the Holy Spirit in. This requires us to operate in the wisdom and the discernment of the Holy Spirit to help identify for our children the words and the actions and the attitudes that they exhibit that please God. And the words and the actions and the attitudes of our children that don't please God. And to identify for them the consequences of both. It's not to just gear them all towards us. We're not training them up towards us. If we do that, they're going to be living with us forever. We want to train them up towards Christ. And what we're doing here is we are making the road smooth between them and their own relationship with God. Train them up in the way that they should go. Help them to see what pleases God and what doesn't and the results of of those actions. And then, that is the premise. And if you're faithful to that, not perfection, faithful, dedicated, initiative, purposeful, here is the promise. When he or she is old, then they will not depart from it. This is God's promise. And again, it may not look perfect. There may be snapshot moments in their life when it doesn't look like God has any hold on them at all, or even seasons of their life. And yet, this is God's promise. And He is a faithful God. This is a faithful promise. Well done, good and faithful servant. When they're old, they will not depart from it. Now, in previous weeks, Justin has given us guidelines, and I've been appreciative of that. It's not one size fits all, even in our own family. Like I said, our two kids, same last name, same DNA, same parents, completely different uh, wiring, uh, motivator. And that's our job as parents, to get in there and to discover how they're wired, to discover how God put them together. Why is it so important to do that? Because life is messy. Kids are unique. Oh, how I wish 
life was like a hallmark plot. (laughs) If you're like our home, you know this channel has already started. (laughs) It's on all the time. And for those of you not as familiar with Hallmark, let me get you in on a little spoiler. This is how every Hallmark movie goes, like this. The plot of every Hallmark movie is about a career woman who's too busy for love, but yet she has to move to a small town. Why? I don't know. Where a handsome local bachelor teaches her about the true spirit of the holiday. It does start snowing, they do kiss, and yes, there's a dog. Oh, but if life was just like that. But it's not. It's messy. It's complicated. Kids are unique. And that's why I think it's so important to highlight this verse in Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7. It says, these words I'm giving to you today are to be in your heart. Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. I'm not poo-pooing praying before meals. I think that's a good thing. I'm not putting down praying uh, before bedtime. That's a good thing. But what this verse highlights and encourages us and instructs us to do is not live our lives and then just devote a small amount of time to God. And it's also not, don't read this verse and also think you've got to be on a continuous loop. God says, thou, 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 do the do's, don't do that. That's not it at all either. It's to take the initiative. It's to be prepared. It's to dedicate. That's what we're going to be doing in a few minutes. To dedicate yourself that no matter when, no matter where, when your child expresses an opinion or a fear or a joy, to be ready, to be ready to talk about it with them from what you've hidden in your heart, what you've put in your heart, no matter where, you're in your house, you're on the road, and you lie down when you get up. Our jobs, moms and dads, is to connect our kid to their heavenly father, to connect the creation, the blessing that God has uniquely given us, the opportunity, yes, but the grace that is specifically, intimately, purposefully meant for you as their parent. Again, not to wire them dependent upon you, but instead to talk about them with their kid, with your child, whenever they express it, to connect them to Christ, to connect them to what pleases God and what doesn't. Deuteronomy says, talk about it all the time. When we are young, our parents represent the authority of God to us. And in many ways, they represent God. We first learn to obey and submit to God by obeying and submitting to our parents. Again, in our 21st century American mindset, those obey and submit, they rub up against us. And yet, in Ephesians 6.1, it says this, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Notice it doesn't say, obey your parents in the Lord because they're always right. It says, because this is right. The verse goes on to say, you're going to have a long life. That's the promise. If you do this, why is this so important? Not because moms and dads got all the answers, but because by doing this, we start to see God clearer. By doing this, we start to connect our children, the creation, to their heavenly father, the creator. And we start to make the road clearer to how their life will work well, how their life will live long. This will be right. Because remember, this is a weighty responsibility. God's uniquely placing it in the hands of moms and dads. Not to be the rule maker, because eventually we're going to have kids that will be the rule breaker. Right? I've heard it said this way, rules without relationship equals rebellion. If it's just the my way or the highway bullseye on their face, wagging the finger, eventually they're going to take the highway. That's why God sent us Jesus. To to take the form of a man, to live with us, to have relationship with us, to meet us where we're at, to hear us, and then to connect God to that moment. That's why Deuteronomy says everywhere, teach them, everywhere, listen to them, everywhere, connect them to their heavenly father. 
it's, it's, if it's just about doing the rules, then heck, that's how they're going to see God. Just as a fuzzy, gray-haired grandpa in the sky with a stick. Right? They get out of line, he's going to whack them. If it's just a bunch of rules, that's how, how they see you is how they're going to see God. And that unfortunately happens in families. And it unfortunately happens in churches where they see church as just a bunch of rules. I grew up in a legalistic church, a rules-based church. That's not life. That's not connecting this child to their heavenly father. Rules without relationship equals rebellion. If it's a bunch of rules, God speaks to this as well. And a little bit verses later in Ephesians 6, 4, as for parents, don't provoke your children to anger, but raise them in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Our job as parents is to get in there, to find out and discover how they best learn. Each child is unique. How they're wired, how God put them together, to find out how our kids are individually gifted. And then our mission as parents is to connect how they best learn, how they are individually wired to God. I've heard it said this way, and it's not a perfect analogy, but it it works. Uh, That relationship, parent and child, can be described as training wheels. When you're learning to ride a bike, training wheels are essential. They are critical to that goal. But the goal is not to ride the bike forever with training wheels. The goal is to ride the bike, to ride the bike towards Jesus. In a, in a real sense, we are raising them to release them. We are raising them to release them into their own relationship with God that needs to be cultivated in all the formative years of your child's life. We are raising them to release them. If we train them up, if we are faithful and dedicated to that opportunity that God uniquely gives to us, then we are training them up and we will release them into their own relationship with God. If we give up and if we throw our hands up into the air, guess what we're we're releasing them into? The world. They will be trained up by someone. They will be trained up by something. And I know all of us here that our moms and dads and all of us who have an impact in our children's lives want to hear that statement at the end. You know, what did you do with what I gave you? You want to have a good answer for that. Moms and dads, that, that question that God uniquely chose you of all the moms and all the dads in the world. He chose you. And he give, gave you uniquely, personally, intimately, the grace to do it. To train them up and to release them into their own relationship with God. We are modeling and training them up into their own relationship with and dependence upon Christ. Now, as, as Justin has gone through this series, there are some issues, there are some uh, topics uh, to face. And some individually, maybe not worth battling and fighting and facing. Um, certainly the ones that we've talked about in this series. Uh, discipline. The Bible is replete. Uh, that vo- folly is built up deep in the heart of a child. We need to get that folly out. We need to get that um, desire, that temptation that's in all of us to follow the God of the mirror out and instead put the God of the Bible in, connect them to the God of the Bible. Technology. We need to step to that, moms and dads, grandparents, aunts, uncles. We need to face that. What are they watching? Who are they messaging? What are they viewing? It's such a critical aspect of our 21st century life that will shape them. We can't put our hands up in the air. We've got to be dedicated to that. And relationships, friendships, dating relationships. These are critical issues that are worth facing, and that's why they've been part of this series. There may be some that you may think, comparatively speaking, probably not worth facing. Maybe fashion trends, hairstyles, types of clothes they want to wear. Maybe uh, music styles. Maybe the color of paint in their room. Probably issues not worth um, facing and fighting. But more important than that, the either or, this issue is important, that issue is important. What I want to 
close us with is this idea. Um, and it's, it's found in Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20. And just before we put that up there, let me just kind of set the, st- the stage. Um, King Jehoshaphat was surrounded by his enemies, the Moabites and the Ammonites and all the ites. And being a faithful man, he wanted to come to the Lord and face not his enemies and just look at the practical nature of his situation. He's a, he was a faithful king. He was a faithful man. He came and faced the Lord. And in fact, you can read about it in Second Chronicles, and I encourage you to do it. He told his people, we're going to pray, and we're going to fast, and we're going to ask God for guidance. Because what, what King Jehoshaphat was asking himself and what I'd encourage all of us in this issue of raising our kids and parenting is how have you been, if you determine an issue is worth facing, how have you been facing it? Oftentimes, we end up facing off with our kids and we end up fighting them. And we think our way is the right way. It's my way or the highway. Or this is the rule you need to follow. And we end up facing in the wrong direction. And we end up fighting. Instead, what I want to do from this verse is encourage our focus to be elsewhere. Are you fighting your child or are you focused on God, facing him? Like I said, King Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah and he was, they were surrounded by their enemies. And so instead of looking just strategically at how to face this battle, he, being a man of God, the Bible even says, put his face down to the ground, called for prayer and fasting, wanted to hear from God. His focus was on God. And moved by the Holy Spirit, Prophet Jahaziel offered these words found in 2 Chronicles 20, 15b and 17. This is what the Lord says, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle does not belong to you, but to God. You need not fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. God will fight the battle. That doesn't mean you throw your hands up. That doesn't mean you have no responsibilities. Look, it says, take up your positions. Stand firm. Go out and face them. God is with you in this task, in this responsibility, this obligation that he uniquely places into your hands, moms, in your hands, dads, to raise up your children, toward, to train up your children towards him. God is mighty. And we can take encouragement from that, that uh, God is never distant, that no matter what the issue is, God desires to be right there walking with you. This is, has been a... Uh, an important series, a challenging series, and one that I think highlights the idea that we need to be purposeful. We need to be intentional. Um, Good parenting doesn't just happen. It's hard work, and it's primarily the role of moms and dads. Those of you in our church family that are moms and dads, those of you that desire to be moms and dads, I think there's something to take away from this series for all of us. And One of the key in these verses that we looked at today and through this series is intentionality. And that's why I'm so excited for moms and dads and families to be purposeful today and in dedicating their children to the Lord. We call it baby dedication, and that's true. We are dedicating babies. But it's really moms and dads. And if we're being honest, it's really families. When when Suzanne and I got here to Delaware, one thing we recognized very quickly there's some big families here. There's uh, aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents that all have a role and a multitude of opportunities. God is faithful 100 times out of 100 to give us opportunities to impact 
our children. Yeah.